Spice was already a billion dollar company and my mum was still morbidly obese. And I was trying, because I care about her so much, I just want her to live for a long time. I don't care about, you know, what she looks like. She's like, mum, I want you to eat healthy so you can be around for a long time. And I tried to, you know, give her free Quest bars. I offered to pay for trainers for her. And every time I would say, you know, mum, like, what can I do? How can I help? She just said, I'm too old, I can't. And over time we realized the power of the mind. The Quest was amazing for people that were going into the gym, picking up a Quest bar or like thinking, oh, I, I want to eat something healthy today. But it was, meant nothing to the people that felt depressed, had anxiety or didn't believe in themselves enough to even go after picking up a healthy protein bar. We really started to realize that to create actual impact, like actual impact, we need to go after the Now, the two of you have built two successful businesses, one that sold for a billion dollars, the next that's reached a billion people. Progress can look like a lot of things. So have there been trade-offs in this pursuit of progress? Ah. <laughs> have there a been trade-offs in yeah. this So as he was actually saying it, one other thing that we do that I think is extremely powerful is we play a game called No Bullshit, What Would It Actually Take? So once we sit there and go, what is our goal? To build a studio as big as Disney. All right, before you even get started, we sit and go, what? Like, no BS, don't try and say like the things that we want it to be true. But actually, what is true, that what would need to be true in order for us to build a studio as big as Disney? And so we sat there and we said, okay, it's gonna take us to put our own capital in. It's gonna take us to work hard. What does work hard look like? Is it a certain amount of hours? It's a, is it a certain amount of achievements where you put things into place and you make sure you're always incrementally working towards that? Is it that you, maybe you have to, um, so this is exactly what we did with Quest, it was, oh, we have to put the house on the line. And that was like the no BS, that's what it's going to take for us to go all in and build Quest Nutrition. And so once we sat there and said, okay, it's going to take us to put our house on the line, it's going to take me at the time to be the, the supportive wife to come in and help you out. It's going to take no vacations. It's going to mean you're going to need to take a third of your pay cut. Like we literally sat down and wrote a laundry list of what it's going to take to start in Quest Nutrition. And once we had that list, we just looked at each other and we're like, all right, are we willing to do it? And if the answer, when the answer is yes, now you just know what you're heading towards. You know the type of path that you're about to approach. And so there's no surprises. There's no all of a sudden him coming home and going, yeah, babe, so the business isn't doing well. And so, oh my God, I'm so sorry, but we lose our house, right? There's no surprise. We've established what we're going to do in order to go for that goal. And in that comes the sacrifices. What are you willing to sacrifice? What are the things that you're okay with um, putting aside for now? And a lot of that was... Um, I think you said it earlier, my self-esteem, my ego of like, I didn't know what I was doing. So every day I'm struggling, I'm trying to figure something out and I keep failing. But I knew that I had to learn in order to get to the goal that we wanted to get to. So I knew every day I had to get back up. And then the same with him, with the skill sets. What skill sets do I have to learn in order to get to the goal that we, we have to, where we want to get to? And that comes with a lot of freaking sacrifices. Mm. I, th I think that's really powerful. I mean, the way you, because uh, excuses are a big thing for you, right? And it feels like that no BS list is almost like an excuse breaker. It's because you, you've written it down, right? So we, we put it down. We know what's on the line. There's no, there's no surprises to the trade-offs. Like there are trade-offs, but we know them. And we've actually confronted the excuses before they, before they become that burden in our ear. Is that true? A thousand percent. And I think you said this. The thing with excuses is sometimes they're very true. And, but it doesn't serve you. It doesn't serve your goal. So are you going to let it sit with you or are you going to find a way around it? So let's say a lot of people's reasoning, which was ours originally when we wanted to make movies, is we don't have enough money. So we're just going to go and do this thing until we have enough money. We don't have enough time. And the truth is, if you play the no BS, what would it actually take? And you say, I don't have enough money. Then you keep going down and go, well, how much do I, money do I need? Okay, what would it take for me to get that money? And sometimes people don't want to look at the answers. So maybe it takes you having to sell your house, move in with your in-laws, and rent one of their bedrooms for the next three years um, in order to save your money so that you can go and start a company. Well, some people don't want to do that. Okay, well, at least now you have your answer and you're not sitting there using the excuse 
that you don't have enough money. You just looked at it and like, oh, to take, for me to get there, I need to live with my in-laws for three years. I don't want to do that. And now you've just decided. And now you're not beating yourself up over, oh my God, I can't believe I'm not there yet. Or like with us with Quest, there was no, we didn't leave ourselves any room with ex for excuses because we just went down that list of, are we giving this over? Are we doing this? Are we actually showing up? And if the answer is no, then how can you expect to reach your goal? So for me, it really was the mindset was the big key. And then over time, as we started to work mindset and building a studio, because that was our background, we really started to realize that to create actual impact, like actual impact, we need to go after the younger kids because the age of imprint is between 11 and 15. That's the period where they're most susceptible to the messaging. And so if we really want to do no BS, what is it actually going to take to make global change on people's mindset? you got to get them young. So we basically sat down and said, what does that look like? What type of studio do we build? And then for me, my personal thing has just been leaning more and more into young girls. It's I could wake up every single freaking day and fight for that 14 year old girl that was me that didn't believe in herself, that felt ugly, that was teased, that was made fun of for my looks. I will fight for that 14 year old girl so that if I can touch her then and let her know and have her help, help her to believe she can become anything she wants if she sets her mind to it and works hard, then I feel like my job is done. But it has to be to me, on a global scale at that age, um, that's how you really make real change. So every day I wake up for that 14 year old Lisa. You know, work ethic starts to boil down to how do I actually manage my days? Like how do I actually get up in the morning, get something rolling and do this 365 days a year or whatever the pattern is over that time. So do you have, and I'm looking at you Lisa, do you have routines, rituals that feel like, okay, all of this stuff is true but it's gonna come down to me waking up and then having another great day. And then tomorrow, waking up and having another solid day. Like that pursuit of progress. What are the rituals and routines that you have? Yeah, I definitely have because I've ha um, had a lot of health issues. So for like six years, I've been dealing with just like the worst gut um, issues you can possibly imagine. So when it first happened, I couldn't eat for like at least it was what four? I was legitimately afraid she was going to die. It was that scary. So for about six months, I was on like three or four ingredients. I couldn't even put pepper on my food. I was in such gastro gast gast stress that because I couldn't eat, my hair was falling out, my nails were brittle, my stomach had been protruded out to here. So my health her blood glucose was in the. 40, low 40s, upper 30s, which is like you may start having a seizure territory. Yeah, and I was just permanently there for a year. Um, and six years later, I'm still struggling. So just to kind of give you an idea of how bad it was. Because of that, I realized I had um, re ignored my body. We were building quests. I focused on how many hours am I putting in? Am I on the grind? How do I make sure that I show up? Because I was so insecure, I definitely thought that if I put more hours in, it would like outweigh how um, incompetent I was. And so I just kept putting more and more hours in. I was ignoring my health. My health absolutely fell apart. And since that day that my health fell apart, I said, I cannot show up for other people if I don't care, take care of myself. It's obviously very cliche. We have the whole oxygen mask now before you put on someone else, but it's so true. And it took my health literally falling apart for me to realize, oh, Lisa, you are a human being. You have to listen to your gut. You have to pay attention to your body. That then created an entire system of a morning routine for me that sets me up for success because how am I supposed to impact people if I can't even take care of myself? So I created a morning routine that was definitely optimized to me. I tried a million different things. I tried meditating, I hated it. I tried yoga, I fucking hated it. And then I realized my jam was going into the gym and lifting heavy weights listening to music and singing at the top of my lungs some you know destiny's child songs like that was my jam i realized i felt so good after i did that so i started to stop listening to other people telling me what i should do and i just left space to experiment in the morning with a different thing so i got up and i read and i was like this is really boring right so i just tried a bunch of things and then saw what was the best for me same with the food my breakfast has all been optimized because of my gut health i've tested so many different foods to see what sets me up for the day with brain clarity 
clarity, with energy, that's all to do with experimentation. Once I found all these moments of optimization, I then created my morning routine. But the biggest thing, the biggest thing that changed it for me was my Saturday routine. I take Saturday mornings off completely. I switch my phone off. I tell all of my, I've told all of my friends, all of my family, you cannot reach me on Saturdays. Period. My friend, and of course, everyone pushes back. What do you mean? What if we need you for, you know, emergencies? And I was like, you can text Tom. I'm with him. And so, you know, you kind of start telling more people, more people just like, yeah, but what if I don't have Tom's number? It's like, but you know him who knows Tom. And you're like, but what if I don't know someone that knows Tom? Said with love, then I, you're not close enough to me to warrant disturbing my self-care time. And so I've made it a rule. I got massive pushback. I stuck by my boundary because I set this boundary up for my own self-care so that I could show up for everyone else. And so I set this boundary, I stuck to my boundary. And now, like years later, everyone respects it so much that if I go to say to someone, oh, okay, yeah, let's do it on a Saturday, they'll be like, no, 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 your phone's off. I'm not gonna talk to you. And so setting that boundary, setting that space, and then I'm creative. So I pick up a pencil, and I just draw, that's all I do. And that's my time, that is what we call selfish time. It is my selfish time. And every Saturday, I do everything I possibly can to be at my art desk um, and serve myself first. So that is imperative. If I don't do it for a couple of weeks, I notice the difference in my spirit, my energy, my happiness, my enthusiasm, how I show up in our relationship, how I show up as a leader, everything.